Hello and welcome to the 104th episode of the Sock Bunny Knit and Fit video podcast. My name is Kimberly, also known as Sock Bunny, and today is Tuesday, July 23rd, 2013. I am recording in sunny Florida in the United States of America. It is currently raining. I've been waiting all day for the sun to come out so I could record. It's not going to come out, so I figured I would just go ahead and do it. The lighting's actually not as bad as I expected it to be, so... Uh, Maybe you might hear some rain. It hasn't started thundering yet, but Bandit is still scared because he's scared of thunder. And if it's overcast, that means to him it's going to thunder. So um, if he comes in here, don't be surprised. <laughs> um, if you are a new viewer, thank you very much for watching. And if you're wondering who Bandit is, he is my greyhound, my sweet, sweet greyhound. Um, I am Sock Bunny pretty much everywhere on the internet, such as my Fitness Pal, Ravelry, Plurk, Instagram, Google+, Twitter, iTunes, and YouTube. And the blog is at SockBunnyKnitAndFit.blogspot.com. The email address is SockBunnyKnitAndFit at gmail.com. The Etsy shop is SockBunnyStudios.etsy.com. And the Facebook page is Sock Bunny Studios. And you can just go to Facebook and type in Sock Bunny Studios and find it. That's the easiest way. My next shop update is going to be on July 30th, which is a week from today, at 5 o'clock Eastern Time. And my shop updates for the next couple of months at least are going to be on the 15th and 30th of each month. Um, let's see. Oh, this past Wednesday, I had my 100th episode of the podcast. And I also had my 200th sale in the Etsy shop on the same day. So that was a big day, big day for me. And I really, really appreciate everybody who has watched and everybody who has bought something from the Sock Bunny shop. And um, this weekend, the 27th, Saturday, I will be going to Sarasota. My friend Heather, who lives a couple of hours north of me, her name is Heather WB Online, um, she is going to be celebrating her birthday on Saturday. So she's going to drive down and she and I are going to go to a good yarn, which is a yarn store in Sarasota that neither one of us has been to yet. And we're super excited about it. So if you are in the area and you would like to meet us up there, let me know. And, um, I don't know a specific time, but if you are going to go and you let me know a time you're going to be there, I'll make sure to be there at that time. And, uh, the store is open from 10 to four this Saturday. Uh, my next episode is going to be on Monday since Heather is spending the weekend with me and she'll be leaving Sunday afternoon. So I'm just going to wait and record on Monday. Um, I want to say thank you to a couple of people who have left new iTunes reviews. Uh, very, very nice, very nice reviews from um, the first one I'll spell M A H O O T A K Mahutak and also Crazy Knitting Fool. Both of you, thank you very much for the very nice things that you said. I really, really do appreciate it. And I appreciate everybody who watches. And uh, we are up to 70 star ratings. So thank you guys very much for that. Uh, what are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about Ask Sock Bunny, Finished Objects, Works in Progress, Spinning, Fitness, Sock Extravaganza, Knit and Crochet Alongs, Tips and Tricks, Charity, Favorite Things, Stash Enhancement, and What I Am Watching and Reading. So let's hop right into it. First section is Ask Sock Bunny. And my show notes are over to the side here, so you'll see me looking over to the side. Um, two people ask very similar questions. Kathy Ann and Rose Bob both wanted to know about my spinning and also about dyeing. Uh, so Kathy Ann said, I'd like to know how you got started in one, spinning, and two, dyeing yarn. Did you take classes for either? I have no plans to dye, but at some point I might start spinning and wondered about the process. And then Rose Bob said, which was your first spindle, and do you still have your very first hand spun? So very briefly, um, I uh, belonged to a local knitting group for a couple of years, and um, several of the ladies there were... Um, very uh, proficient spinners and loved, loved, loved spinning and tried for a long time to get me to spin. And I said, no, I mean, why do I need to spin? I can buy yarn. The time that I spend spinning, I could be knitting. And back then I was a much slower knitter. So knitting time was very precious to me, more precious than it even is now. And um, so I was like, no. And they were talking about, you know, 
spinning the yarn and then you have to ply the yarn and then you have to wash the yarn and thwack the yarn and hang the yarn and skein the yarn and I was like that is too much work that is too fiddly I am not going to do it well they finally talked me into trying um drop spindling and I did try it and I did not like it and no I do not still have it it was the most overplied ridiculous I mean it was so overplied that it would hurt your hands to touch it <laughs> It was ridiculously overplied. Um, so, and I had bought some fiber. So, actually, one of the ladies there that uh, spins a lot, I got her to spin it for me because I'm like, I'm never going to spin this. So, fast forward to about another year of hanging around with these same ladies and them still spinning, spinning, spinning. I was like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and try spinning again. And so I tried and I had just a plain um, wooden spindle, which is way up there. I'm not going to grab it, but um, just a wooden drop spindle, um, very basic. And um, I actually sort of liked it. And then um, one of the ladies in the group had several drop spindles that she let me try. So she had a golding, she had a trindle, um, she had a really fancy one that had um, like a stone um, whorl on it. And I tried, um, it was three, four, somewhere around there. And out of all of those, believe it or not, even more than the Golding, I liked the Trindle. So uh, shortly after that, I got a Trindle. And that has been my favorite drop spindle ever since I've gotten it. I do like the Turkish drop spindle. And I like my other drop spindles. I have a few just plain wooden ones. But I always go back to the Trindle. Um, I don't know why. It's very lightweight yet spins really fast um, for a long time. So I don't know why. I just really like it. So I recommend if you're going to start uh, spinning, if you can try out a few drop spindles. If you can't, just get a drop spindle and try it. But again, a l another lesson to learn is that, you know, I didn't like it and I tried it again and I did like it. So maybe it was just my frame of mind the first time I tried it. Um, I really just didn't enjoy it. I was so worried that the yarn was going to break that I overplied it. And I think that's, I overspun it. And so I don't even know if I ever implied that it was that overspun. <laughs> so uh, not too long after that, after I got the trindle, um, or around the same time, uh, one of my friends wanted to get a. She had a Spinolution B, which is a very small uh, travel wheel, and she wanted to get rid of it. Uh, and get a different wheel. And so she let me uh, make monthly payments to her and that's how I was able to afford my first wheel. So I made monthly payments and paid off the uh, Spinolution B. I liked the Spinolution B. Um, it's a very easy wheel to learn on. It's a very good beginner wheel. I loved it because it, you, it wasn't what I would say as fiddly as a regular wheel. It didn't have um, I mean, it was really easy to take the bobbins off and on and, and all that kind of stuff. The thing I didn't like about it is that the bobbins were small and would not hold. Uh, they could barely hold three ounces, and I wanted to be able to spend four ounces. So I ended up selling that last summer, last July, actually. Oh, I think it's about, oh, it's probably around my wheel's birthday. I should go check. Um, uh, so anyway, I uh, sold my Spinolution B and purchased a Ladybug from Shocked, Shacked, however you say it. And that was last July. So I should go and look and see what her birth date is. All the Ladybug wheels have their birth date stamped on there. But I think it's sometime in July. So anyway, uh, I've been very, very happy with my Ladybug. Um, I did get to try a Ladybug because Heather, <clears throat> Heather WB has a Ladybug and she let me try it. I also did try a Sidekick. I didn't like it as much. Um, to me, it seemed harder to um, push the uh, pedals. <laughs> I know I'm using the wrong term. <laughs> pedals. It was harder to push than uh, the um, Ladybug, to me anyway. And the price, you know, is a few hundred dollars more. And I really don't need a travel wheel. I don't really go that many places. And the Ladybug is small enough to where if I want to take it somewhere, it will fit in the back seat of my car. So that's all I really care about. I'm not going to be flying with a wheel. If I ever was to start traveling enough to where I was going to be flying with a wheel, I would probably invest in an e-spinner. Um, but I have no desire to do that right now. I'm super happy with my wheel. I have not bought any additional accessories for my wheel. I haven't bought any extra bobbins or anything. I do want to get more bobbins, but it's not a priority. 
So um, that's about how I got started spinning. How I got started dyeing, I actually, um, my first dyeing experience was with Easter egg dye, and this was a few years ago. I probably had been knitting for about a year and a half, and I had some bare yarn from Knit Picks. So after we dyed Easter eggs one week uh, before Easter, I I knew so little about it that I didn't even know that I should have like pre-soaked the yarn. I just took the dry yarn and I had the cups that had the Easter egg dye in there and I just took the um, yarn and like shoved part of it in the yellow, part of it in the blue, and part of it in the green and let it soak up. I didn't know anything about citric acid, which the vinegar provided the acid part of it. Um, and then I microwaved it for like five minutes and then let it cool and then rinsed it and it didn't, the dye didn't run. So I figured I did it right. <laughs> so that was my first dyeing experience. And that, that, uh, sock yarn never really faded very much. Uh, I did end up getting rid of the socks because they were one of the first pairs of socks I ever knit and, uh, they were not the best socks in the world and they got a hole in them and I didn't feel like fixing it. So I just threw them in the garbage, but, uh, the yarn still looked really good. The dye still looked really good. So if you want to try dyeing and see if you like it, I would say Kool-Aid or Easter egg dyeing would definitely be the way to go. Uh, let's see. I think that was it. So I haven't really taken any classes. I mean, I did have my friends at knit group show me how to spin. Most of what I have learned has been through uh, trial and error. I haven't even really watched a lot of videos. I should. I know I really want to like get better at spinning, but right now, I mean, it's not like I'm a professional spinner. I'm spinning for my own enjoyment and I'm happy with what I'm doing. You know, I haven't really had any desire to do any art yarn or anything like that. Um, I think I'm too practical for that because I would need to have a purpose. I mean, unless I was to spin some yarn that I could put flamingos into, <laughs> not live flamingos, but like if I had like little flamingo plastic things or something and I could spin those into yarn, but see then that would have a purpose. So it's still being practical. So there you go. Uh, one of the things I do want to learn that I haven't learned how to do yet is I want to learn how to spin beads into the yarn. And from what I hear, that's not that hard. So that will probably be my next adventure in spinning. So thank you guys, uh, Kathy Ann and Rose Bob. Thank you for your questions. That was really interesting. And if you have a question for the Ask Kimberly or Ask John John uh, segment, I did um, sticky the Ask Kimberly or Sock Bunny thread uh, to the top of the Ravelry group. So go in there. You can ask me any question you want. It doesn't have to be knitting related. And um, I will answer it on air. So next we have finished objects. None. <laughs> Let's move into works in progress. I have several several things you've seen before and something you haven't seen before yet, unless you're on Plurk or Instagram, because I did Plurk and Instagram it last night. So uh, first, I will talk about the hat that I am making. This is um, in my Star Trek bag, which is probably always going to be my favorite knitting bag. And this is from the Star Knits um, Etsy shop. I am working on the Lost Banner Hat. I think it's Susan B. Anderson wrote that. And this is for my daughter, Rachel's boyfriend. And I dyed the yarn. I think it's my Admiralty colorway, if I remember right. It's just a navy blue. There we go. So uh, this is where I was last time you saw it. And I don't really have any incentive to finish it because it's really hot here still and he's not in any hurry for it. So I just work on it when I feel like it. And then I did make some pretty serious progress on my sweater. I am making the Pearl Less Pullover from Valley Yarns. And I had picked up the yarn and the pattern at uh, Stitches in Atlanta in April. So here we go. And where the little pink uh, doodad is, the hickey jiggy. That is where I was last time you saw it. So I have made some progress and this is going to be, I think pretty nice. Um, this yarn is super soft. I'll show it to you again. Let me find a label here. And it is Goshen yarn from Valley yarns. I bought 10 balls. It is 
48% Peruvian cotton, 46% modal, and 6% silk. Valley Yarns, which is yarn.com, it's Webb's uh, house yarn. Each of these is 50 grams and 92 yards. And this colorway is Waterfall. And this yarn is magnificent to knit with. It's a tiny bit splitty, but I'm using bamboo needles. I tried several needles until I found one that I liked that wouldn't. Um, so I'm using bamboo needles for this. And that seems to be helping. So progress there. It hasn't been getting a whole lot of attention because I've been doing so much spinning for Tour de Fleece. And then we have, um, I finished the first sock. I showed this last week uh, and it was almost done. In fact, you can see where my little jiggy jiggy here is. I really just had to finish the toe. And this is my um, pineapple upside down cake and it's by uh, Desert Vista Dye Works. And I love, love, love her yarn. So this is the first of two socks. And then I started the second of my socks by Desert Vista Dye Works. That is in the carrot cake colorway. You can see I just got a tiny bit started on that. Here's the yarn. I rewound the ball just to make it tighter. And and these will not be matchy matchy. In fact, I specifically started the second sock uh, where it started in the orange and then goes into the brown and then the white so that they wouldn't match because I am such a control freak that if that I want them to match perfectly, but it drives me crazy that I can't get them to match perfectly exactly. So I'd rather have them not match, purp purposefully not match, than drive myself crazy trying to match them. So this is... Starting it in a different place is a way of me letting go control of over the sock yarn instead of letting it me, you know, constantly comparing the socks and make sure they match and everything. No, that I will drive myself crazy. So I know if I start it in a different place on purpose and try not to match them, I'm better off <laughs> how the mind works. Um, let's see. Oh, I did also make some progress on... This is um, my own uh, sock bunny yarn. This is um, the Kaizo pattern from the Knitted Socks East and West. And this is my Whoa, That's Pretty Green colorway. So you can see here's the back of the foot. So last time you saw it, I had just started the heel flap. And then here's the foot. And this, these socks are turning out so great. This is my Merino Cashmere Nylon base, my Janie base. So I'm very happy. And I'm using my current favorite DPNs, which are Knitter's Pride. I love, love, love these. I'm hoping they have some more of these at uh, a good yarn this weekend because I will get some. I also want to try some Chow Goos if they have them. And what else? I think that was it. I think it was Child Goose and Knitter's Pride uh, that I was going to look for. Of course, I'll look at everything that they have. <laughs> um, okay, so those are my works of progress that you've seen before, but I do have a new work in progress, and the title of this podcast episode is going to be Sock Blanket Mania, because I started a sock blanket I have been putting it off and putting it off. I've wanted to make one for at least three years, maybe four years. And I just kept putting it off and putting it off. And then um, the thing that really put me over the edge was when Paula from Knitting Pipeline started hers. And I was like, oh, I, I really need. So when she started hers, I started gathering up my sock scraps. And I was going to wait till uh, Tour de Fleece was over. And... Um, I decided not to. Actually, yesterday I was sort of feeling yucky and I was sitting on the couch and I just wanted to start something new, so I went ahead and started it. So, I, without further ado, oh, I dropped something over here. Hold on. Without further ado, let me show you. I did um, make seven squares yesterday and I showed them off on Plurk and Instagram. Um, so, I'll show them to you. And what, how you do this if you're new to sock blanket mania um, is you knit your base try your you knit your base squares or mitered squares as they are 
and then you start joining them together. So here are some, this is some Lion Brand sock yarn. This is some Patton's Croy sock yarn. Pretty. This is an unknown sock yarn. I have no idea what this is. It's pretty though. This is Knit Picks Stroll Tonal in their one of their green colorways. This is some opal, and I don't remember which colorway it is. This, uh, oh, and then the first two squares that I had done, I did, um, this is some hand dyed that I did that I knit my TGV out of on my Sparkle Sunshine base. And this is some lollipop yarns. Um, it's a pink, yellow, and green striping, but I never got to the green stripe. And then I, oh, I can't remember who, I did a cowl out of this for a knit along. Uh, I know you're probably yelling at me who this is. Anyway, I have this left over, so I decided to join these two squares. So um, it's super easy to do, and I would say a, an adventurous beginner could handle this. So I decided to start joining them together. You can see that's what I've done there. And so basically what I did is I picked up these stitches and these stitches and then started knitting and then eventually your miter. I'm just about finished with the miter on that. So there you go. I have knit seven squares out of, as I posted on Instagram, I've knit seven out of 11 T billion that I need to do. So yay, I'm excited about that. It's like I said, I have wanted to knit it for a long time and I finally was like, I'm just going to do it. And I'll probably just like, you know, do them occasionally. And what I'll do is like every, every, every time I finish about 10 of them, I'll show them to you and um, I'll just put like a stitch marker in them. So I know which ones are the new ones and I'll just do it that way instead of showing it to you every week or whatever. So that is the new insanity. And all I want to do is knit those squares. I don't want to do anything else. I've had so much running around and everything to do, to do today and all I really wanted to be doing was sitting and knitting those squares. <laughs> so that's my newest obsession. So yay! I'm excited. Okay. Um, spinning! I wanted to show you my grand totals for the Tour de Fleece which ended on Sunday with the Tour de France and yes I did watch the finale for the Tour de France like I said and it was fabulous. I really liked it. It was um, it was the 100th edition so they uh, did a like a light show on the Arc de Triomphe. Um, they like did like a laser light show on there. It was really really cool. So here is my spinning that I did not counting what little bit I did on the um, spindles. I did do some uh, drop spindling, but I'm not counting that and that this because I didn't finish anything. So um, first, this is some um, uh, Into the World that I had chain plied and it is ridiculously overplied. I need much, much more. Oh yeah, look at that. Let's see, where was that? Oh, that's not too bad. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, look at this, this piece here. Crazy. So, oh, actually that's the end. So maybe that's not too bad. It's really, really, here's a piece where you can see that it's so overplied that it's twisting back on itself. And I got this little curly Q thing. I have no idea how this would be to knit. I am going to knit with it though, because I want to see, you know, it's really pretty though. <laughs> So that I got um, 52 yards of chain ply. I can't remember how many ounces this was. And then, um, oh, this is my most recent thing that I finished. I finished the blueberry merino. This was two ounces and I got 140 yards of a two ply from that. And it's gorgeous. It's purples, greens, and blues. Love it. And then I, um, let's see, oh, here's my motel curtains that I had dyed. And this I ended up with 356 yards of a two-ply. And I love the barber polling and I love the colors. Beautiful. And this is the, um, from Euphoric Fibers. This was the Merino Silk, uh, I think it had merino and silk and there was something else, but I don't remember right now. I don't have the tag in front of me, but it's, it's the one where, um, they had dyed it by, it looked like 
um, just dripping some colors on there and it turned into this marble effect which normally these are not my colors but I actually really love this and this is one of the softest things I've ever spun so I think I'm going to be knitting a cowl out of this because this actually would be very comfortable to wear around the neck so that's what this is destined to be oh and that is 296 yards and from my blue BFL this is my uh, Tropical Seas colorway. Uh, this is 316 yards. I did um, spin two more ounces, which I'm going to assume is probably about 100 more yards. This just hasn't been plied yet because I need to spin two more ounces to match with it. But the, I got bored with the blue. so. And then lastly, this is some um, alpaca. Two ounces of alpaca, and I got 84 yards. And oh my gosh, this is also really, really, really soft. This is really soft in a squishy way, and then this one is really soft in a um, smooth, satiny way. So they're both really soft. I don't know what this is going to be. I'm thinking maybe a headband or something like that. That would be cool because it's a neutral color. We'll see, though. Or maybe just like some little tiny fingerless mitts or something. No idea. But I love it. So um, not counting what I did on the drop spindles and estimating... And not including this, which is probably about 100 yards, I would say. Um, not including all that, just what I just showed you was 1,244 yards. So I think that's pretty good for me, who is an amateur spinner for Tour de Fleece. So I'm super happy with how everything went. I, I really appreciate uh, everybody making all your sweet comments about my daily episodes that I did. I really liked it. And my husband really liked uh, the fact that you guys enjoyed having him on there and uh, he's crazy. <laughs> so it was nice that I got to have Rachel and Sarah and Joe all three be special guest stars on the podcast during the tour. So maybe again next year. Um, oh, and uh, as I announced on episode 96, we are still having a name Rachel's stuffed duck contest. It is in the, uh, um, sock Bunny Ravelry group so the rules and everything are over there and I'm going to be drawing the winner for that on the next podcast which is uh, like I said going to be next Monday and uh, so we have before then to go in and name and there's a picture of her stuffed duck and it was just you know if you didn't see it it was on episode 96 it's a really short episode so okay so next let's talk about fitness fitness I haven't really worked out very much this past week because um, I haven't really been feeling good. Friday, I did go to Bush Gardens. It rained the whole day, and I walked the whole time I was there, and I was there a long time because um, Rachel was working. So I took her to work, dropped her off at the employee entrance, and then um, I walked around. It rained the whole time, so there was really no place to sit. Um, I did stop a couple of times to eat, uh, but I couldn't really knit um, even though I took my sock with me thinking I could get some knitting time in, but I didn't. Um, and then one time I was, I luckily did have an umbrella with me, so that was good. Um, but, uh, that all that to say <laughs> that I did 20,000 steps that day, 20,000. That's like, uh, according to my Fitbit, that was nine point something miles. So that's pretty amazing. Um, actually Oh, did I even put those nine miles in? I don't think I did when I did my, oh, I haven't put those nine miles in. So when I say uh, that I'm almost to my 1,000 mile goal, I thought I was at 972, but I'm actually at 981 if I didn't count. I don't think I put those nine miles in. I'll have to go look. Anyway. I, uh, in the Sock Bunny group, we have a fitness along. Any day that you work out at least 30 consecutive minutes or if you're wearing a pedometer and it says that you have um, 10,000 steps, you can record an entry in that month's fitness along. And at the beginning of the next month, I will draw a winner. The winner gets to choose um, any sock yarn or fiber, and I will dye it in up to three colors, or you can pick something that's already in the shop. We also have a fitness poster along, and I have a donation for the next few months, and I want to show you that. These were sent by Carrie, 
and she sent some stitch markers and she said I could keep one and then keep the rest for prizes. So these for the next few months, for the next five months, are going to be the prizes for the fitness along that we have every month. So fitness poster along. So um, she said I could keep any that I wanted. Oops, and now I'm dropping them and some are falling off. And that's my fault because I'm flinging them all over while I talk. Um, well, that's fine because then I can show them to you better. So I decided, I'm going to show you the ones I decided to keep. I decided to keep these uh, because they have seashells on them. And Sarah and I went to the beach a couple of times when she was home. So that's what it reminds me of. So her name is Carrie and her shop is Sunny Shop. Yeah, it's Sunny Shop. Dot Etsy dot com and it's S U N N Y S H O P P E. Her name is Carrie, so thank you, Carrie, very much for donating these. So these will be mine, and she does have um, in her shop a code, twenty percent off with the code Sock Bunny, and she said that code does not expire. So the the set that I was flinging around while I was talking, I'll show those to you. They're really pretty, and actually I told her, I said, you have some of the prettiest stitch markers I've ever seen, so let me show you these. So there are five of this particular one, and I will tie them back onto the card, because I was talking too much and I flung them off the card. And um, here's another set. This will be an upcoming prize. Very lovely. This was, this was my um, second place choice, because I really like that blue and white bead. It was a hard decision between this set and the set that I chose. And another set is here. Focus. There we go. Lovely. And these are also lovely. There we go. So I have five sets to give away. So starting with the drawing that I'll do at the beginning of this month um, at the beginning of August for the July posters you will get a set of stitch markers here we go I don't want to lose any of them so thank you Carrie very much for donating those I really really appreciate it and I will think of you and Sarah every time I use these Let's put them over here okay um, oops dropping things okay um Let's see. Okay, let's talk about Sock Stravaganza. Sock Stravaganza is a sock knit along that I have going June, July, and August. All the rules are in the Sock Bunny group if you want to go check them out. Um, we have in the um, Sock Stravaganza general thread, which is where all socks get posted, we have 180 posts in there. So yay, that's amazing. And there are several categories. Like I said, all socks go into the general thread. And then... Um, we also have Design Your Own Socks, which you totally need to go check out, Self Striping Yarn, Lace Vanilla Color Work, Socks Knit with Sock Bunny Yarn, Pictures of Socks being, Pictures of Socks being Knit in Public, and Socks from a Book. So be sure you read all the rules to make sure that you're following, and you can cross post your socks in as many of those categories as they will fit into. Um, and this knit along is going to end on August 31st and we have a ton of prizes. So go check out the prize thread. I'm not going to read them all today just to save time. Uh, but we have a ton of, uh, prizes and, um, for knit and crochet alongs starting in September, Oct starting in September for September, October, November, I'm going to have a knit along for my bee leaf half pie shawl. I am going to have a special in August for the pattern. So if you haven't bought the pattern yet, starting on August 1st, I'm going to have a coupon code for you to uh, get a discount when you buy the um, pattern if you haven't gotten it yet. And then also we will be having a uh, hat drive for the uh, Pinellas Hope, which is a local homeless shelter. It'll be um, September, October, November also. And that will be hats or scarves or mittens for any gender, any age. Um, tips and tricks, a really quick tip and trick. Um, we have a problem, as I know a lot of people do, with ants. And they're the little tiny sugar ants that get into the house um, several times a year and just randomly 
they'll be like, we'll get ants in the bedroom. And there's like no food in there or anything. So why do we have ants? You know, and um, it's just weird. Sometimes we get them in the kitchen. Sometimes we get them in the dining room. Sometimes we get them in the bathroom. You just never know where they're going to turn up. So a tip that um, I knew before, but I have never implemented until now. And I heard, heard about it on Knitting Pipeline. Paula from Knitting Pipeline recently had an issue with ants. And um, she reminded me of this tip. This is something my mom used to do when I was growing up. She would use um, boric acid or borax to uh, get rid of bugs. So the trick that you do, if you've never heard of this, is if you have ants in your house and you want to get rid of them, you just mix. Um, the recipe that I found online, you mix um, some water, like a cup of water. I think I mixed mine in a mason jar. So what I did is I put um, a cup of sugar three heaping spoons full of boric acid and then just filled it up the rest of the way with water and then dissolved it. So that was my solution that I used. And I took, um, they say to use cotton balls, but I don't have any cotton balls, but I had the cotton rounds, you know, the flat ones that you can use on your face. So I soaked those in there and like I had some ants in the bedroom. So I just took the cotton round and laid it on a piece of plastic on the, um, dresser in the bedroom. And, um, uh, by the next day, the ants were gone. Um, what happens is it will attract more ants at first because of the sugar. So, but they take that um, and they eat it, but then they go back and they share it with the um, nest of ants and it kills the ants and makes them go away. And so uh, we, I did it in the dining room because we have ants in the dining room and in the bedroom right now. And also I noticed today that um, we just got some bird feeders a few weeks ago and put them outside. And I noticed that we had ants in the bird feeders. So I took one of the cotton rounds and laid it on each one of the bird feeders. So I will let you know if that works uh, to cure that problem. Um, if you know of a better way of getting rid of the ants at the bird feeders, let me know. Um, that is it for tips and tricks. My favorite thing that I'm going to talk about this week is actually a TV show. And it's a TV show that you might not expect that I would like. It's actually a car show. What? It is a show called Top Gear. If you have BBC America in your cable, you might have heard of it. It's um, been on forever. I think maybe like 20 years or something. But I just found it a couple of years ago. And I'm going to actually read you what it says on the BBC America website because they say it better than I do because, you know, it's their job. So anyway, uh, the show is called Top Gear. And the three hosts are uh, Jeremy, Richard, and James. And they are so funny. And that's what makes the show. It's not the fact that it's about cars. I think these three guys could have a show about anything. And just the dynamic between the three guys they are so funny. They have some really great one-liners. They're be they're always really mean to each other and playing tricks on each other. Um, but you could tell they really like and respect each other. But they have like nicknames for each other and stuff like that. So anyway, I'll read you what it says on the website. It says, Top Gear takes extraordinary and ordinary cars to the limit and beyond to find out if they're half as good as manufacturers claim. Full of extreme stunts, challenges, celebrity appearances, and weekly features, Top Gear is far more than a car show. You'll find no boring stats or impenetrable conversations about camshafts here. It's the sharp wit of hosts Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, and James May that make it more than just a motor show. And here it comes on Monday nights at 8.30 Eastern Time. And uh, I think they're like a week behind um, when they, they air it in... Um, Britain, and then they air it over here like a week later. So last night um, we had the episode that had um, Benedict Cumberbatch, who's the one who played Khan in the latest Star Trek movie. So he was on there. And uh, they have like celebrities come on and drive a car to see who can have the fastest time. And um, they do, I mean, all different funny, funny, funny kinds of uh, challenges with each other. They try to beat each other. They play tricks on each other. It's really funny. So if you haven't checked it out, I know it sounds weird because it's a car show, but like I said, th these three guys can have a show about anything and it would be funny. So you ne definitely need to uh, check that out. So the show again is called Top Gear. It comes on BBC America. 
And of course, if you're in Britain, it's on the BBC. Um, stash enhancement. I've got some crazy stash enhancement this week. First, I want to mention that I was gifted a couple of um, patterns. First, Kimberly, who is Kimber Lolly, gifted me her uh, most recent shawl pattern called Love Knot. And as usual, it's gorgeous. All of her shawl patterns are gorgeous. And then um, uh, the other one was, oh, uh, a Texas yarn. She sent me her sock pattern. If you want to see what the pattern looks like, um, it's an owl pattern in our Design Your Own um Design Your Own Socks Thread and sex, Socks Extravaganza, and she's having a sale right now. Um, I'll give you the details of that. Uh, oh, gosh. I can't. I wanted to clarify it with her before I said it on here, but I'm just going to take a chance and hope that I'm not wrong because she's running this special to the end of the month that it's a dollar off until the end of the month, which is July 31st. So it's called What a Hoot. Um, what a hoot owl socks and they are really adorable their color work socks adorable you need to go and look at them and then um i was gifted a uh i won a prize okay so if you have not watched the multi podcast you need to go watch it the hostesses libby and jesse are so so funny and they I mean I laugh every single time I watch them they're so funny and at the end of every episode they always sing a song to each other and I won a prize from them recently and the prize that I won was that I could get a random gift from Libby so because I could choose from several prizes and that's what I chose because Libby is very creative so I figured it would be a good prize so um, before I show you that I have to tell you that they, at the end of their episode 41, at the very end, after they've sung a song to each other, um, they usually, after they sing a song, they'll show like outtakes or, you know, a short video of them um, playing with their cats or something like that. And it always just makes me laugh. So I always watch the, to the very end. So episode 41, I get to the very end and I, they start fast forwarding the film and I'm like, what are they doing? Because it looked like they were talking to each other. And then you see Jesse wearing rabbit ears. And what it turned out being is they did like a little parody of me and my stuffed bunny, John John. <laughs> it is really funny. And I watched it the day after my daughter, Sarah had left. So I think I was like really emotional and I was laughing and crying at the same time because it was so sweet that they did that. I'm getting, I'm going to get teary eyed now just thinking about it, but it was so sweet that they, that they thought enough of me to do a parody of me. So it's really funny. I mean, Libby even puts on a Coke shirt. <laughs> so you need to go watch it, go watch episode 41 and watch it all the way to the end. It is really, really funny. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Libby and Jesse. You really, really have no idea how much I love what you did. So anyway, I want to show you the prize that I won from them that Libby sent. So first, I have a, what my husband would call a prop. My my bunny John John. Now, if you're a new viewer, my bunny John John, I've had him since I was little. And he is my mascot of the podcast. He's also on all my yarn ball labels. And um, he's very handsome. So just get ready to see a handsome bunny rabbit. But here he is. And he is wearing one of the things that was sent to me from Libby. She sent me a coin skirt. And this is because she is a belly dancer. So this is my incentive to start belly dancing, which I am totally going to do. If I hadn't been under the weather this week, I would have gotten the... I have a DVD. I need to get it out. I would have gotten it out this week and already started. But she sent me... Isn't that fantastic? So, uh, for some reason, the bunny, John John, thinks it's his and he wants to model it for you. Hi, everybody! <laughs> I laughed so, so, so hard when I opened this. So, thank you, John John, for being a model. You're welcome. So, that is my first prize that she sent. But she also sent, she sent a postcard and wrote on here. This is the postcard. So she wrote on here what the gifts are. So um, she says, first, 
she sent a, a new backdrop for the um, podcast. So this is going to have to be my new backdrop for the podcast. I'm going to have to hang it back here. Flamingos! I know, you're surprised. So that's my new backdrop for the podcast. Second, old people candy. Not because you're old, but because it's funny. So she sent some candy, and I will try it as soon as I get done podcasting, because I didn't want to open it until I had recorded. So there you go. Old people candy. Probably because I have gray hair. Um... This postcard, because it serves as a reminder of the best place to stay in Boise should you ever visit. Which I would love to visit you! Oh my gosh! That would be so awesome. Um, she also sent a little friend for John John. <laughs> it's a little keychain. Hi! I think this is going to go... Actually, I think I'm going to put it as a uh, zipper pull on my William Shatner bag. I think that's where that's going to go. And then, um, she sent the coin skirt as an excuse to start belly dancing. And then she also sent a random pencil or a Harry Potter wand, as her friend's son put it. So there you go. <laughs> so I absolutely love it. Thank you very much. Oh, and also she drew on here uh, where Pancake was laying on her package. <laughs> she drew around him. That's adorable. Pancake is her cat, in case you're wondering. So, like I said, if you haven't watched Multicraftual, you need to, because they will make you laugh. They always make me laugh, and they're just such sweet, sweet ladies, and I can tell they just love each other. So, thank you guys very much for letting me win that prize. I am very, very happy. And then next, another thing that I haven't even had a chance to thank the sender yet, because I just got it. I got this from Laura Mag, who is Laura, who lives in Wales. She sent me, she got an extra um, copy of Ply magazine, which I have been hearing everybody rave about. And I said I want to learn more spinning. So, you know, uh, this should help. It looks, everybody says this is fabulous and the articles are really, really good. So I am uh, really excited. So thank you, Laura, for sending that. But the most exciting thing she sent she recently went to the Doctor Who experience, which would be, other than the Coke store, which that the Coke store would be like the Pope going to Rome, Kimberly going to the Coke store. This would be the second place I would go on the planet if I could go anywhere. So I will open this. She sent me a few doodads from the Doctor Who experience. First, she sent a postcard with the TARDIS on it, and she says, if you ever come to Wales, there are two things you must do. Must do. Go and see Doctor Who Experience and see me. And you have a deal. If I ever, ever get to go over there, I will definitely, I'm going to come stay at your house, so just be aware. <laughs> and then she also sent me a Doctor Who Experience pencil! And I collect pencils, so this is awesome. And yes, my daughter Rachel did try to steal all of this stuff from me. But the thing she wanted to steal the most, a Dalek button. Exterminate. Oh, and we did get, I can't remember if I've said it on the podcast, but we did get Sarah hooked on Doctor Who while she was home. <laughs> and then she also sent a button with Amy and the do 11th Doctor, Matt Smith. Amelia Pond. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. Thank you so much, Laura. I like it. Yeah, I might have to hide that Dalek button because I think Rachel's going to try to steal it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So that is all of my stash enhancement. So let's move into what I am watching and reading. I have not really been reading very much except, you know, I do my usual daily Bible reading and journaling and stuff like that. But, um, the only thing I've really been watching the last few weeks is the tour. So now that the tour is over, <laughs> I can get back to watching Star Trek. Although I did watch a few episodes of Star Trek. Um, I can get back to watching Star Trek and, you know, all the weird other stuff that I watch. And although I did watch Top Gear last night, that was awesome guess that's it. Wow. 49 minutes. Crazy. 
And so with that being said, I will say goodbye. I want to remind you to uh, go enter both of the fitness threads that we have. Don't forget we have the fitness along and the fitness poster along. And um, it's too late to join the July fitness poster along, but you can start thinking about what you want to do in August. And then um, don't forget to go ask a question in the Ask Sock Bunny or John John thread. And don't forget to post your socks in Sock Stravaganza. We're past the halfway point. Believe it or not, Sock Stravaganza is halfway over. I can't believe it. So I hope you have a great week. I will see you next Monday. Keep on crafting. Bye.